Hey, listener, this is Josh Elledge, CEO of UpMyInfluence.com. We are actively seeking guests for our daily commercial-free entrepreneurial inspiration podcast. If you know someone who is doing six to eight figures in business, send them our way. Just go to UpMyInfluence.com slash guest. Let's get on with the show. With us right now, we've got entrepreneur and sales coach and professional speaker, Liz Wolf. And Liz, you're found on the web at LizWolfCoaching.com. And that's Wolf with an E, Wolfie, Liz Wolf Coaching. Liz Wolfie, Thank I've you, Liz, Wolfie for joining us. Times. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Really yeah. appreciate it. In Manhattan, no less. And uh, we were just chatting in terms of like, you know, we're recording this in May. Things are a lot better than they were May 2020, for sure. They really, really are. It has been just, you know, so many people were getting vaccinated and taking care and still wearing our masks yeah. and doing everything we can. And we, we the numbers are going down. So that's yeah. really important. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, you know, and I'm excited to see, uh, you know, they, they've got lots of little teasers of like, you know, dancers and performers kind of getting back in the practice studios and like, oh, it's not far away, you know, a regular life and we'll be able to go to shows and all that other stuff to, you know, again, one day. So yeah. Liz, um, I feel like as I, you know, looking at your website immediately, I feel like we're birds of a feather. Um, so you are very, very well known uh, for helping folks sell in the way that consumers want to buy, right? And And not this old school Tom Hopkins, you know, all this, you know, fancy closing techniques and all that other nonsense. Right. Um, Liz, from a high level, would you mind just kind of giving us your, your, your kind of your 101 on, on your, your main thrust, you know, kind of your topics that you, that you coach on? Absolutely. So what I do is I coach entrepreneurs who feel stuck in some way. And, and certainly as entrepreneurs, we feel stuck a lot, uh, especially because we want to maybe launch a business or grow our business and we want it to be abundant. So I, that's what I do. I help people launch and grow an abundant business. And I specifically say the word abundance because the approach that I take is going to be a lot different than this very, um, let me go out and chase down my, chase down my prospects and clients and, and work it. You know, I don't, I don't mm. think that that's really how we're going to create our success. So we have to, the, the biggest thing, of course, that we want to be focused on is relationship and, uh, having selling be an authentic expression of what it is that we love about our business. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's an example of doing that wrong? Oh, well, one, <laughs> well, one example of doing that wrong is where you will uh, try to sell something to somebody and they really don't want it. So uh, and then walk away from that feeling rejected. I mean, um, how silly is that? Yeah. <laughs> You are going to be like, hey, don't you want to sell this? Do, uh, excuse me. Don't you want to buy this? 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 Oh. And um, then you, they say, no, 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 no. And you say, but why not? It's really great. And by the way, I'll give you a really big discount. And then now they they just are like, no, back off, back off. So yeah. what selling is, is it's providing a solution to a problem that somebody actually has. Uh, and by the way, what I was saying earlier about, you know, the the natural expression of, of what you love about your business, I'm borrowing that directly from a friend of mine, uh, Marilyn King, who does says that also about marketing, because this these are the two areas where we feel so much like we don't know how to talk about ourselves so we're going to just ramble a lot in people's faces and hope that they catch on and really want to buy what it is that we're selling and that's not how it works how it works is you find out if they have a problem see if your solution fits it you create a relationship with them and then you see if it's a match that's really what it is yeah. So um, what are what are some great ways of maybe, I, I guess, you know, a lot of this is just like asking better questions and finding out, can we be of service? Um, and if if it's a no, like it's okay, right? 80%, 90% of people you talk with, they probably don't have a need for what you have to offer. And, right. and, and that's not to say that you're product is a failure. It's just, it it's designed for 10% of that population. 
Yeah, you, you're hitting on so many things that I'm actually taking notes because I want to come, <laughs> come back to them. Okay, so first of all, when someone says no to you, I whenever anybody says no to me, my first question is, well, my, fir- my first response is thank you. But my first question after that, you mentioned asking questions. So my first question is, why not? Like, don't you want to know why it's not a fit? Because it could be mm. many, many things. One of which, by the way, could be, I'm just not ready yet. I love what you're selling and I'm just not ready yet. And what we do is we hear no and we go, oh, it's all over. And we run in the other direction rather than saying, no, it's just a no for now. I have people that have come back to me after years and I just keep pinging them. I just keep pinging them. And then the second thing that you mentioned is um, this this thing about rejection or if we don't, what, what we do is if we don't get an immediate, enthusiastic, positive response, yeah. we go, oh, there's a, you know, it could be a hundred reasons why somebody hasn't bought anything from they're not ready. They don't have the money right now. It wasn't quite a fit. They misunderstood what you said. I mean, how many times has that happened? You just have misunderstandings and let, let me help you clarify. Is there anything I can help you clarify? And it's always good to ask these questions because you will get more information as you go into your next mm. selling relationships. Yeah, that's really interesting. So I, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to think about that, you know, because sometimes I think we don't want to ask why not because we don't want to know, right? Like it's because I don't like you. You're a terrible person, <laughs> <laughs> and it's never that. It's it is never, never that. that. It is never ever that. It is, yeah. you know, rejection is a funny thing because we think, oh, they're rejecting me or they're rejecting my product. But first and foremost, what they're doing is they're saying, I had a problem you provided a solution that's not a match Mm. and so i'm not going to buy from you right now um and so every time i've ever asked somebody why they always say something about themselves they never say something about me right So, so but i'm making up a whole story about it And uh, now one other thing that I want to say that we take with this, because I think this is a crucial, crucial piece of information, which is that we say, oh, they didn't, I followed up with them one time or twice and I didn't get a response. So no, no. do you know, my, I work with my husband, we've been in business together for 25 years and he does a slightly different side of the business. He does a CRM software. So he's working more on the technology side and I'm more yeah. on the people side. Do you, so, do you mind saying which one? I'm, I'm a huge fan of CRM mastery. Absolutely. He he's sells Maximizer. Oh, okay. Maximizer, Great. They're, they're, they come out of Vancouver and he has been, that's big part of sales, by the way, is you have to have yeah. a CRM system. Oh, yeah. Huge part. And we've been doing this for 25 years. And um, so we... You know, one way to get sales is to get a good referral source. So we've gotten really great referrals from Maximizer. They've been awesome the 25 years we've been working with them. But we were looking to expand. And so people are like, you got to be on, do SEO. So we were like, all right, let's do SEO. I didn't really know a lot about SEO. So I got on the internet and I asked for referrals and I did this. And I think we talked to eight, maybe 10 different vendors. Ask me how many of those vendors have actually followed up with me after the call to see whether or not we wanted to buy from them. The answer is one. No. One time. What is, oh, come on, people. (laughs) One, one time. Yeah. And he's the only man that I wrote back to to say, to give him an update because at least he followed up with me and I'm, you know, I'm a human being. So, and I'm like, where are all these other people? Look, I have yeah. an hour long conversation with them. They, they tell us they're going to give us a proposal. Uh-huh. They have questions. Now, actually, let me take that back. Two people. One yeah. guy who said, um, I don't think I can work with you. I can't help you. So oh. it's not it's not my bailiwick. So he was at yeah. least kind enough to tell us. Yeah. Okay. So here, and by the way, we still haven't hired anybody. <laughs> so we're just sitting here waiting for somebody to want us to hire them. That your is- customers are doing that. Absolutely incredible. So, it, you know, we've all heard the expression, this is old school, right? Fortune is in the follow-up. Yes. And, 
you know, the way that we structure follow-up are in stages and cadences. So stages, it's like, what's the last major thing that happened? Like had that discovery call, had a discovery call, and also gave them an agreement. Now, based on that level of relationship, there is a whole 30-day plan for us uh, for what happens if they are at that stage. So if uh, I had the discovery call, but they haven't quite gotten to the point where they're ready for an agreement yet. Like I've got 30 days of what I like to call stacking positive association, because you also don't want to be naggy, right? You don't want to be like, hey, you ready to buy yet? Liz, you ready to buy yet? Come on, Liz, come on, you want to buy? It's like, <laughs> that's creepy too. So you don't want to do that. Uh, but Liz, give me some ideas on what makes for great follow-up. And I am all ears. I obsess on this subject because I so want to get this right. Because we're all busy and someone needs to lead in that dance. And so I'm always looking for the best dance moves, Liz. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, I'm going to say the most obvious thing, which is to actually follow up with people. Yeah. Even if you did a crappy job, even if any of those SEO people had done a crappy job of following up with me, it would have been better than no follow up. Oof. And uh, I did a a, a sales training, I, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. I did a sales training and I did a little poll in the sales training and I said, how often do you follow up with people? Zero, one to two, three to five, eight or more. I never stop following up. And the every 100% of the people said once or twice and then I don't and then I wait. And but studies show that it takes eight contacts before anywhere from five to a million to yeah. get that. So the most important thing on a sales call, at the initial sales call, is going to be creating and building that relationship. Now, why, why would that be? Because in my follow-ups, I'm much more likely to want to engage with a human being that I created a relationship with mm -hmm. than, a, than somebody that I didn't. Now, I'll give you another quick example. I play the ukulele. That's part of my thing that I do. I play the <laughs> ukulele. And I sing and play bluegrass, but I, I'm a huge ukulele fan. And I, I got on a call with somebody and through the course of the conversation, turned out he played the ukulele. Now, this is him selling to me. OK, this is he's a copywriter and he's selling to me. So it turns out he played the ukulele. Like he saw it on my site or something. I don't know where he picked it up. Well, we talked about the ukulele. Guess what? Every time I get an email from that guy, I smile. I'm like, he plays the ukulele too. Isn't that great? <laughs> you know, and I haven't bought from him yet, but every once in a while, I'm probably on a drip campaign or something like that. He'll send me an email, but he always puts a little note in there like, you know, how's it going with the ukulele? And I remember that. So I'm going to be much, I, I don't need a copywriter right now, but I promise you when I do, that is the first person that I'm going to go. Totally. And find is going to be the ukulele guy. I don't even know his name, but I know he plays the ukulele. And then, and that's what I'm going to want to do. Yeah. So um, in terms of like, uh, again, the, you know, any, any other ideas, uh, like what, what should we do? Like, so for example, like, let's say we had a conversation with someone and they were like, oh yeah, that sounds really great. And then, so you sent them an email with like the, you know, the information that you promised and then they didn't respond back, which is normal. Like, because again, we are the ones that need to lead in the relationship. But if it's been three days, what might be some other activities, some other cadence items that we could do, that we could be doing? Yeah, well, first of all, it's very important that when you're on the call with the person and they say, yeah, I'm interested, I'm gonna think, let me think about it. Or mm. I gotta work out some things. People are mm -hmm. always working out things. Mm -hmm. The next question out of your mouth is, Oh, okay, great. When are you planning to make the decision? Okay. Now I have an idea. If he's, if, if, uh, you know, the SEO people had said that to me and I said, well, we're talking to 12 other vendors. And so it's going to be four weeks from now. Now I have an idea. I know what to expect. See, that's part of the problem. It's like, I'll follow up with you when. Or, or, you know, I'll get back to you when. So you want to get off the phone with them knowing when they're going to make that decision. And then, so what I'll say is, so let's say they're talking to me about coaching. And they say, well, I'm, gonna, I'm talking to a couple other coaches. I'll talk to you. Uh, I'm going to decide by next Friday. 
So I'll say, so they'll always say, I'll follow up with you, but they don't follow up. No, no, so, they're not, no, they're not going to. <laughs> they don't have to, because it's not their job. Yeah, their that's job right, exactly. Right. So I'll say, okay, if I haven't heard from you by Monday, I'll follow up with you. So now they know to expect that I'm following up with them. That's the first thing. The second thing is, so let's say I follow up on Monday or maybe Tuesday, I give them an extra day and they, I don't get a response. So what I would do is my cadence is about, I do like every other day, like I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll say when I'm going to follow up, then I'll give it another two days. I'll be like, hey, make want to make sure, you know, did you decide yet? And then I might give it maybe two or three more days. And I'll admit, I go by my feeling on it. Like, does that, do I feel like I'm bugging them? Or do I feel like, no, they had enough time. Like they did tell me they were going to tell me by this date and I haven't heard from them. And then I might give it four days. So I start to spread it out a little bit. Now, <clears throat> most people have heard of this guy, Chris Voss. He did, he has that book about, he was an FBI negotiator. Yeah. And he, one of the, I read the book, fabulous book. I only remember one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that some of it went in and went out, whatever. But what he said is, actually, this is really powerful for sales. He said, you want people to say no, because that makes them feel like they're in control. Mm. So a lot of people will say no right off the bat because they want you to stop. Like they want to be in control, not even the yeah. thing to stop. They want to be in control. So they'll say, well, I'm not ready right now, which we hear as no, get lost, but doesn't mean that. Yeah. What it means is I'm not ready right now because those mm. are the words that came out of their mouth. Yeah. And then he said, at some point you can go back to them and say, like in my case, I would say, did you give up on coaching? Because you want them to say, no, I didn't give up on coaching. Or did you give up on whatever the, you know, Interesting. Did, did you, did, do you no longer need a CPA? Do you, what, what do you, you know, what's your status? But instead of saying, Am I bugging you? You you try to get them to say no. And you would be amazed. So my little line is in my subject. I write, did you give up on coaching? And they 50% of the time, at least, if they have any intention of working with me, they will write back and say, no, blah, blah, blah. There was a friend, a, per, a person recently who's, you know, kids were in lockdown from school yeah. and it's just distracting. Right. It's always something they're doing. It is oh, not always doing. And then you might ask, but how long and how, you know, forever, Liz? Yes, forever. Until that person tells me no, I'm going to continue to follow up with you. Or if I decide I'm, it's not worth it, I'm so busy, I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. Like I have better fish to fry right now. So I'm not going to do that. So I'll drop them. Depends on the, how the call went. Yeah, usually at some point, I mean, professional, professional, they're they're not going to just not say anything. Like if anything, they're like, usually it's like, hey, I appreciate the follow up. And then, you know, they'll explain why they can or can't move forward or something like that. Yeah, that's why that I liked Chris's. And that's a good book to read. I forget the name of it. But if you look him up, Chris Voss, um, that is a good book to read. But that's where you, if you do get to a certain point where you're feeling like, I really should have heard from this person by now. And I'm talking like the fifth or eighth time that you're following up with them and see if you can get them to respond from a, no, I'm just not ready yet place. Mm. For sure. Not, not, uh, never split the difference. Is it? Uh, I think it is that book. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm curious, Liz, you know, cause again, you've been in this position for a while, like how do you work with folks today? Yes. Yeah, so I work with folks in a couple of different ways. Well, first of all, with the pandemic, I'm no longer able to do live in-person events. And mm -hmm. you know, hopefully that's coming back because I do love working with groups. But I really work with people in two ways, either private coaching. And the, the advantage of that is I'm really paying attention to you. I'm the kind of coach that really, I want to know what's happening in between our calls. I don't want you to come back, come to me, get a bunch of like little inspiration, then go off and two weeks later, come back and go, <laughs> oh, I didn't really do anything that I said yeah. I was going to do. So I don't like to do that. So I want to hear from people in between. And um, I also do group coaching programs. So I am, uh, I do these like 
mini, their entrepreneur accelerator groups are like eight week coaching programs that are group coaching programs that you come in. All of my coaching works the same way. We get clear on your vision because you have to know what it is that you want to create. And I'm not talking about a to-do list. I'm talking about what is the big vision? And then we come up with a strategy. What's the most effective, purposeful action that I could take? And when you get into action, the first thing most people do is have some kind of breakdown. Oh, I thought I was going to make, how many sales calls are you going to make this week? 10. Okay. How many, how many did you make? One. All right. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not going to tell you to go back and say you're going to do 10 again. I'm gonna figure out why you only do one. What's really, yeah. because then you're going to say, well, I don't like being rejected. I don't like talking on the phone. I don't I think I'm bothering people. See, all of that's the juicy stuff. That's the stuff where you're like, now we're getting to why you're really not making the sales. And you uh, so we work through those hidden barriers and then it it continues in that fashion. So I do that with both my private and my group coaching programs. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's at lizwolfcoaching.com. Uh, anyone going there, is there something else they should be looking for while they're on your website? Yeah, there's, a, first of all, there's lots of videos, lots of things, free resources you can use. I'm constantly doing events. And then I also have, if you go to lizwolfcoaching.com forward slash sales training, mm-hmm. you will, uh, for, for my podcast listeners, you can go in there and you can get a five-part sales training that I do. It's it's about a half hour each lesson and wow. it addresses all of these biggest fears, the five biggest fears that we have around selling. So you can do that. And I usually offer that training for a cost, but I'm willing to give it to you so that you can get in and really see how this works uh, for free. So you're welcome to go in Liz Wolf Coaching forward slash sales training. Awesome. All right. Liz Wolf. Again, lizwolfcoaching.com slash you said sales. Sales training. Sales training. All one, All one word. word. Awesome. Like, oh, sales. But just go to my website, reach yeah. out to me. I'm there. You can even schedule a call with me. Uh, I'm completely accessible and available. Lots of resources and downloads and lots of things you can do. Fantastic. Liz, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Josh. It's been so great to be a guest with you. I love your, all of your podcasts are awesome. I encourage everyone to go listen to all of them. The information is really great. Very kind of you. Thanks, Liz. (laughs) Okay, you're welcome. Thanks for listening to the Thoughtful Entrepreneur Show. If you are a thoughtful business owner or professional who would like to be on this daily program, please visit upmyinfluence.com slash guest. Now, if you've got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. Now, if you do that, tag us with the hashtag UpMyInfluence. Each month, we scour Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. We pick one winner from each platform and you get crowned king or queen of that social media. Now, what do you win? Well, we're going to promote you and your business to over 120,000 social media fans, totally free. Now, can you also hook us up? Now, in your podcast player right now, please give us a thumbs up or a rating and review. We promise to read it all and take action. We believe that every person has a message that can positively impact the world. Your feedback helps us fulfill that mission. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You know why? Tomorrow, that's right, seven days a week, you are going to be inspired and motivated to succeed. 15 minutes a day. Now, my name's Josh Elledge. Let's connect on the socials. You'll find all the stuff we're doing at upmyinfluence.com. Now, thanks for listening and thank you for being a part of the Thoughtful Entrepreneur Movement.